Welcome, my name is Harald Sack. And I'm Antan. And this is Knowledge Graphs, lecture number six, Intelligent Applications with Knowledge Graphs and Deep Learning. In this section of the lecture, we are going to talk about knowledge graph embeddings. And here we are going to take the concept of semantic similarity that we have already learned about in the last excursion in the natural language domain to the graph domain. So you know already for word embeddings, words with similar meanings are mapped to adjacent vectors in a dense vector space. And the question is, how can we adapt this concept to knowledge graphs? Meaning, when there are two nodes, which are entities, and when are they two semant semantically similar? If they can be described, of course, by the same or similar facts, then they should be similar. Like, for example, Star Wars is a sci-fi media franchise and Star Trek is a sci-fi media franchise. Or Alec Guinness is a person who is an actor and Leonard Nimoy is a person who is an actor. Is Star Wars then more similar to Star Trek or to Leonard Nimoy? I mean, for us the question is clear. Of course, it's more similar to Star Trek. But can we see this from the graph? So here is a graph de depicting the two famous sci-fi franchises. To the left, we have Star Trek, and to the right, we have Star Wars. And in, on these um, entities, there are also connected entities. For example, um, the main characters of Star Trek and the main characters of Star Wars. And we can also see the classes that relates to the characters. So now the question is, how do we know that Star Trek and Star Wars are similar to each other just by looking at this graph? Well, we can say that Star Trek and Star Wars, they share similar structure. For example, um, Star Trek and Star Wars, they have the same outgoing edges. Genre and is a media franchise. And they also have the same incoming edges, starred in and character in. Okay, of course, the same also holds for other nodes here in our graph. So, for example, if you look here at Leonard Nimoy, for he, for, for that actor, you see, for example, he played a specific character. He starred in, of course, the series. He has an occupation actor and he is a person. And if you then look at Alec Guinness, we see rather similar structures concerning the occupation, concerning the type classification, and also he starred in a series and he also played of course, a character. So simply based on that, of course, we can say, taking into account you shall know a node by the company it keeps, we can say similar nodes can be identified by having similar neighborhood, which meaning similar context. And this, of course, is an argument uh, made by distributional semantics. So what about in knowledge graph embeddings? How do we put the analogy of distributional semantics into knowledge graph representation. So here to the left, you see the knowledge graphs that we just presented in the previous slides. And if we were to apply knowledge graph embeddings, we would see that the low dimensional vector space representation, the vectors of Star Wars and Star Trek are closer to each other, and Star Wars and Star Trek are farther uh, to the people who starred in these franchises. For example, Alec Guinness is closer to uh, Leonard Nimoy as opposed to the media franchise Star Trek. So the idea here is that we learned embeddings of the entities and the relations in a low dimensional vector space such that similar entities, like for example here, um, entities that belong to the same classes will be placed next to each other or adjacent to each other in the vector space representation. Okay, so the design rationale for knowledge graph embeddings is simply we want to capture knowledge of the graph patterns. Like for example, we want also to find about symmetry, like Luke Skywalker is a sibling of Princess Leia, then of course also Princess Leia is a sibling of Luke Skywalker. Also, Antis, uh, asymmetry we want to find out. Luke Skywalker is a child of Darth Vader, but not the other way around. We want to know what's inversiveness. So for example, which property is inverse to another property, simply by seeing that Luke Skywalker is the child of Darth Vader, and on the other hand, Darth Vader is the father of Luke Skywalker. Furthermore, also, 
compositions are interesting, like for example, Leonard Nimoy played Spock, and Spock was a character in Star Trek, which means that Leonard Nimoy starred in Star Trek. Furthermore, also to capture there would be, for example, hierarchies, type constraints, and then also um, properties like transitivity, reflexivity, irreflexivity, etc. So question, are, are you a Trekkie or more into Star Wars? Just take a guess. I don't know. So I leave it to the audience okay. to find that out. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. If we want to construct a knowledge graph embedding, this usually works in the following way. We start here usually with a knowledge graph that we want to embed. And then usually what we have here in our framework, we have a kind of scoring layer. What does the scoring, uh, scoring layer say? Okay, a high score is uh, or giving us the, uh, it's a high score if we have the highest chances for the fact um, SPO, a specific fact, mm -hmm. to be true. So this then, if the fact is true, that this should give us a high score. So that's the objective of this scoring function that we have here. On the other hand, we also need a, a, a loss function for the other way around. So this pays a penalty if the score of positive triple is less than the score of synthetic negative triple, which means we need also here synthetic negative triples. And for that, we have here the negatives generation. So also we have to create corrupted versions of existing triples, which are negative triples, which we need then simply to distinguish which triples are true and which are not, and simply then also to have something that can be fed to our scoring layer, to the scoring function, that of course we have high chances for a specific fact to be true or not, so we should determine that. And based on that, we are constantly adapting the vectors that exactly this thing is computing, which then can be used for any kind of downstream task, like for example for link prediction, for classification, for inference and for any other thing. So this is basically the framework we are dealing with. And let's start here first with a scoring function. So as Harold already mentioned, the scoring function assigns a score to a true triple, uh, SPO. So a high score means that the triple is most probably, um, can be referred to as a true fact. So the first uh, uh, scoring function that we are presenting to you here is a widely, widely used scoring function called TRANS-E or translational translation embeddings. So TRANS-E presupposes that when you have an embedding for the subject, it should be closer to the embedding of the object plus a translational vector which is the embedding of the relation. So it exploits a distance-based scoring function here. And um, there are several variants of trans-E, such as trans-H, trans-R, trans-D, and so on. So another um, variant of trans-E is rotate-E. In rotate-E, the relations are modeled as rotations in a complex space. So for example, here you can see that instead of having a line, straight line from the embedding of the subject to the embedding of the object, here we have a rotation from the head or the subject to the tail or the object. And the scoring function here measures the angular displacement between the subject and the tail elements. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are several different versions of that, a completely differently version that we want to show you is a factorization based scoring function like for example here in the Ruskell framework. And this is low rank factorization with a tensor product, so don't be afraid of tensors. What you see here is the uh, scoring function for Ruskell. And what you see here, you have here the uh, subject entity vectors, so they are given here as a matrix. Here is the vector of the subject entity. Then you have here uh, relation matrix, and of course these are many for all of the relations we have here, uh, with which uh, the, uh, the transposed vector is multiplied, and again then it's multiplied with the vector of the object entity. And this in the end results here in uh, that point here in the tensor, that then a multi-dimensional matrix that you have here. 
So this is a three-way factorization of an adjacency tensor product. So we have here an adjacency matrix for the, for the relations, and that represents the knowledge graph in the end. It captures latent semantics of a knowledge graph through associate entities which vectors with vectors, of course, and it represents each relation as a matrix, as I said here, uh, and models pairwise interaction then between entities via that matrix. Okay, but there are many more. For example, uh, other factorization-based scoring functions are distmult, so this is a bilinear diagonal model based on the dot product, or complex, so this is a complex embedding and using Hermitian dot product, and it's an extension of distmult. And of course, there are other ones like, for example, conf-e, which is based on convolution, so reshaping and convolution, or conf-kb, convolutions plus a dot, pro dot product. And further things, for example, there are uh, um, knowledge graph embedding uh, frameworks that, for example, mm -hmm. take random walks of paths around mm -hmm. a node, so simply to, to reflect the structure and the environment of a node, like, for example, node 2 vec or rdf 2 vec deep walk, or others you see here. And to, uh, today it's rather popular to create new embeddings, so every other day another pair of embedding with some, sometimes also, let's say, um, some kind of um, creative and also exotic uh, mathematical uh, scoring function yeah. occurs and they are then a few percentage better than the others, uh, but only if you are lucky. So, um, just want to say that influenced by NLP advancements, there are also attention-based embedding approaches for knowledge graphs, so, yeah. Of course, and in six months when this uh, lecture is played out, there will be new ones. Yes. So, if you remember from our previous KGE construction kit, there is also a portion we, where we specify the loss function. In this case, we will present the pairwise margin-based hinge loss, and this is a, a loss function that's being used by TransE. So, the intuition behind pairwise margin-based hinge loss is that here we want to maximize the distance between the true triple and the synthetic negative triple by a margin uh, gamma. And by, uh, by uh, distance, I mean first you score the true triple and then you, sub, uh, you score the true triple and then you score the negative triple and then you find the distance between these. Okay, so um, there are many more um, loss function for different types of KGE approaches. For instance, there is negative log likelihood and cross entropy, as well as self adversarial, and so on. So one has to be um, very careful in pairing a score function and a loss function because they go together. Of course. What's left is, of course, to, to clarify how this negatives generation in the end works. So Knowledge graphs, we know that uh, contain usually only positive statements. So the stuff that is there is, of course, true. So where do the negative statements come from? Of course, we have to create them in an artificial wor uh, way. And this is quite easy. So what we do here, we step aside a little bit from the usual open world assumption and uh, consider a locally closed world assumption. So the knowledge graph, we say, is locally complete, and we create corrupted versions quite easily. So we, we take an existing triple and then simply we combine it um, with other, let's say, subjects or with other objects. This is exactly what we do here. Just take a look at the example what we have here. Let's say we have here a triple, Leonard Nimoy played Spock. And then we have here Alec Guinness, Star Wars, and Obi-Wan Kenobi as other subjects that are usually not connected to that uh, property uh, and that object we have here. And then we do all combinations like, for example, Alec Guinness played Spock, Star Wars played Spock, Leonard Nimoy played Alec Guinness, or Leonard Nimoy played Star Wars. So that would be different combinations of corrupted triples that we could then take here simply into consideration. Of course, we have to take care that none of these artificially created then really exist in our knowledge graph. So that's very important. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, just to recap our KGE construction kit, uh, first we have the knowledge graph, and when with the knowledge graph we um, generate the embeddings, and then we apply the scoring layer. But then we also need to use 
um, a loss function so that we can optimize our model. And because we used the, the uh, uh, we we used uh, the pairwise um, margin based hinge loss function, we also need to generate our negative triples. So once we finish with the training, we already have um, the resulting model. And in this case, this model will then be used during inference time for prediction in our downstream tasks. So downstream tasks such as link prediction, for instance, or triple classification, these are just one of the few down downstream tasks that we are talking about here. So um, in graph representation learning, uh, there are two types. I mean, traditionally, we have machine learning for graphs where we pick or extract node link and graph level features. And then with these features, we learn a model that maps these features to labels. But then of course, these are all handcrafted features and handcrafted features requires that the person who selects the feature is of first and foremost, an expert. And then uh, you need to have um, a way of finding out which features actually carries more weight. So that's why nowadays we use graph representation learning. Yes, and graph representation learning that alleviates you from the need of feature engineering every single time. Because you have there an automated procedure and automatically all of the features will be learned in a way like we saw here with a scoring function and a loss function. And this then characterizes the graph accordingly. And of course, there are many ways to combine kind of scoring functions and loss functions to come up with a graph representation that takes into account slightly different kind of properties of that graph. Mm -hmm. And this then makes the difference. And of course, then you can say some are, let's say, better suited for specific scenarios than others. Okay. So far, so good. In the next lecture, we will see how we can apply the knowledge graph embeddings for a specific task which is interesting for our knowledge graphs, and that is knowledge graph completion. Because knowledge graphs not necessarily are always complete. There is always missing information. And with embeddings, we have the possibility to predict missing links.